Hey guys, uh, I'm here to do another review because um, I forgot to do it when I uh, saw it earlier this week. Uh, earlier this week I was able to catch the midnight screening when it opened up on uh, Tuesday uh, for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and uh, I've already written a review on it but uh, for those of you who don't visit my, my, uh, my Tumblr blog uh, that, alright, here's my review. Basically, I love this movie, um, to death. And I've, I've also seen the original Swedish films. I've also seen, uh, I mean, I've also read the original St uh, Stig Larsson book series, the Millennium book series. And actually, I've even caught a couple episodes of the Millennium, uh, television show on a bootleg. Um, and that was pretty interesting. That was, uh, done by, uh, the older brother of uh, Thomas Alpherson, who directed Let the Right One In and uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which I'm going to go see later, uh, uh, probably sometime next month, uh, hopefully before the Oscars roll. Uh, but as for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, um, one, the acting by Rooney Mara, I'm going to have to say this because it's the most forefront thing, that the acting by Rooney Mara, who plays Elizabeth, uh, it's unbelievable. She is a fantastic actress. Uh, the performance, she loses herself in the performance so much that along with all the other elements of this movie that she becomes, it, it, she becomes completely consumed by it. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really powerful to, to watch her work because she gets completely lost in the entire character. I didn't even know she played Erica Albright in uh, The Social Network earlier. Uh, last year. Uh, so she's worked with Fincher twice, which is, you know, which is not exactly the most, uh, you know, shall I say, uh, the most easy feat from what I consider how, you know, difficult it is to work with Fincher. Um, so David Fincher alone, one, he, the, the, the fact that he directed this movie was enough reason for me to get to, to, to get me to watch it. And, um, He's such a perfectionist. He's so meticulous at what he decides that he wants to do uh, to sculpt this. Because I've seen the original film, I've read the book. I actually believe that this movie is actually closer to the book than the original Swedish film is. I love the original Swedish films, don't get me wrong. I think they're fantastic movies. But other than that, um, I think this one holds closer to the book. Uh, Daniel Craig is... Awesome. I mean, like Daniel Craig, uh, Christopher Plummer, uh, I believe it's a uh, Stella uh, Sarska. I'm, I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce his name. Uh, he plays uh, the brother in this movie. See, I really wish I would know the, the names of the characters, and I'm probably going to have to reread the books. But at the same time, the cast of actors is, is impeccable. I mean, along with Fincher's direction, these guys pull off some of the best performances I've ever seen from these people, especially Daniel Craig and also Christopher Plummer. I think fantastic performances. The screenplay is tight. It's very succinct. It's very on point. Uh, Steven Zalian, who wrote the screenplay, he, he was he's a very gifted... Uh, Screenwriter, he did Schindler's List in the first Mission Impossible, and so he he's he's a truly talented writer. I believe he also did the screenplay uh, to to American Gangster, the Ridley Scott film. Uh, but you know, Schindler's List is one of my all-time favorite films, so I, I I knew that the writing in this was going to be, or at least I set the bar for the writing very high. The opening of the movie, it's like they mixed together Fight Club with a James Bond film. But it flows so perfectly. It's also cut to the score of the Immigrant Song, remixed by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, whose score, by the way, is is just as awesome as it was in um, the Social Network. It was it's just as perfect when it comes to its ambiotic, because it's mostly ambiotic tones, and that really works really well for this movie. Especially, it, it's insanely suspenseful. I knew what was going to happen. Like, you know, because I've seen the movie and read the book. But at the same time, you know, I was just completely absorbed in by all of it. Uh, the cinematography, uh, though it can be standard at points, works perfectly. There's no part of this movie that I thought was shot in a bad way. I think, you know, it, it, it was incredibly well planned out. 
Um, and the fact that the original produ the, the producers for this movie were the original producers on the Swedish films was another big thing for me because they would make sure that Fincher would hold true to the story. And the funny thing is not many people realize that because I've heard a lot of people bad-mouthing bad the film, uh, which is up to them. I mean, the film is entirely subjective. But people bad-mouthing the film saying that, uh, you know, it's just going to be a crappy American remake when, you know... Not necessarily all American remakes are bad films. Uh, and, I mean, like, sure, it has that stigmatism because lots of people don't like watching in movies in subtitles. I love watching movies in subtitles. I do it for so many of the films that I do own that are foreign films. I mean, that's just the way I am. I'm appreciative of all forms of filmmaking. But at the same time, uh, I can understand why people wouldn't want to do that. But anyway, uh, the fact is that this movie works so well also because they filmed everything in Sweden. They filmed things in Stockholm. They, all the areas in which they actually call by name, they actually filmed in these places. And th everything fits to this movie. Also, the editing is incredibly crisp. It's incredibly on point. There's not a frame that's wasted. There's never you know, one single solitary breath that is not put into this movie that wasn't supposed to be in there for some purpose. This is probably one of the most closely succinct uh, perfectionist types of adaptations that I've ever seen. Uh, pretty much close to a clockwork orange. It's pretty, it, it's so unbelievably close to the level. Um, this, a, a clockwork orange and the Grapes of Wrath, I believe, are, are probably the three best uh, book to movie adaptations that I have seen. Which is, you know, a really uh, cool thing to have because I'm such a book nut. But definitely one of the best movies, uh, if not the best, so far from what I've watched. I still have to watch uh, Steve McQueen's Shame and David uh, Cronenberg's uh, A Dangerous Method before the end of the year. But as of 2011, this is so far the best movie I've seen this year. And... Um, I, I, and I really am so glad that this movie came out. If, and I know the Oscars are entirely political, but, and I know that they, they always bullshit great movies in the past, so it's not going to surprise me if this movie doesn't get a lot of Oscar nominations. I'm surprised this movie didn't get an NC-17 rating, considering how the MPAA usually is about movies with extreme sex in it, um, or especially sexual violence. So... Uh, I'm so surprised that this movie on R uh, to be released in such a wide array, but at the same time, I mean, it, it, it's just such a good movie. Um, and I, I really hope that it gets its due. It, it was only dominated for maybe, I think it was maybe three or four Golden Globes, and, you know, Fincher, Zalian, and the, the picture as a whole wasn't nominated for anything for the Golden Globes. So I was really, but also at the same time, it wasn't released insanely in time to get a lot of people's reaction when it came to it, because the Golden Globes is run by the foreign press. But I hope for the Oscar season that it gets a slew of nominations, at least, because it is without a doubt one of the best films that have come out this year. Uh, and one of the best book-to-movie adaptations I have ever seen. So, you know, that is definitely something to check out. You know, go see the movie when you get the chance. Um, I'll, be ha I'll have reviews up. Uh, for um, the next uh, films I see over uh, Christmas break, and hopefully I'll get them up as soon as possible. So yeah, definitely see The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Five out of five stars.